The TP presented their new platform with Basha warning private companies that any assets acquired through corrupt contracts will be confiscated. According to the DP, the Rama government has caused 2.18 billion euros in damage to the state. According to official Instat data, compared with the same period of the previous year, the number of German citizens visiting Albania increased by 82.5% for the month of August. From the 23rd to the 30th of September, the new stage of Artovina in Tirana will welcome 14 theatre troops from across the Albanian territories to perform as a part of the Nationwide Theatre Festival for 2018. Good evening, it's 6 o'clock on Monday the 24th of September 2018. Welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Alexandra and I'm here to bring you the day's top stories from across the country translated into English. The Democratic Party introduced what it calls a platform against corruption and the oligarchy. This platform in its essence has the ban on introducing dirty money into the economy and announcing war on corrupt tenders or private public partnership contracts. Democratic Party Chair Lul Zimbasha said the country the country is at a crossroads as he spoke of a threefold crisis. Albania is in collapse. A triple threat, economical, political and moral crisis has gripped our country. The opposition is committed not only to revealing the truth, but also to questioning our platforms to ensure we can see through this awful situation, said Lulzem Basha. While saying that vetting in politics is part of the oppos opposition's political offer, Basha warned private companies, stressing that anti-mafia measures would start from, sequestran, from sequestration of public assets obtained by contracts in violation with the law. We will present the anti-mafia platform proposing the legal and institutional mechanism for the identification and seizure of public and private property belonging to corrupt tenders, concessions and PPPs. I want to guarantee honest business representatives that the DP and our allies stand firm on our platform for entrepreneurship. The greatest service that can be done is to restore the conditions of free competition between businesses, conditions of equal competition and above all law enforcement. All entrepreneurs will be equal before the law, said Lul Zimbasha. Democratic Party MP Yorida Tabaku spoke about abuse in the sector of tenders, concessions and monopolies. The DP has denounced some affairs associated with concessions and in concrete terms have proposed that a company that has offshore resources must not be able to participate in public tenders or concessions. We have proposed the identification of resources for any public or private investment because there was a concern over the increase in construction with unjustifiable funds from the banking sector, said Yorida Tabaku. According to Democrat MP Florian Mima, the total cost of abuses by the socialist government over the past five years now amounts to 2.18 sorry, to 2.18 billion euros. The draft law on magistrates continues to remain in the desk drawer of the parliament after the majority failed to secure the votes required to approve it, requiring also the opposition's votes. During the plenary session, Socialist Party MP Talant Bala filed charges at his former ally Edmond Panariti, declaring that he has been the one who has entered into contracts with Balili. The Socialist accusations have been denied by the former Minister of Agriculture Panariti via a status on Facebook. There is no contract signed by either the Ministry of Agriculture or Edmond Panariti with trafficker Kelmen Balili. This is a trick, easily verifiable and susceptible. You have a year, you have a year to investigate and audit the processes and procedures that have been expressed by the SSA and more, but this does not help you to conceal the spectacular failure of agriculture, wrote Edmond Panariti. Also, the Socialists asked the Ministry of Agriculture for an audit of all agricultural land. Making allegations towards the SMI MP was not enough to satisfy Bala, who then went on to ask the DP chair, Lul Zimbasha, to clarify his brother-in-law's ties with the oligarchs. In an unusual twist, it was the absence of socialist MPs during the two hours of the plenary session that had people talking. However, many returned just in time to submit their votes. All ministers joined the Prime Minister to unite their votes as needed to pass the draft laws on the agenda.
The number of German tourists who visited Albania during August has increased by about 82.5% or 21,346 people. Even looking at the full eight-month period of the year, Germany now represents the country with the highest growth rate of nationals choosing to visit Albania at 36.9%. Regarding Kosovar vacationers, in August there was also an increase with approximately 191,500 more visitors than compared to August 2017. Meanwhile, significant reductions of foreign nationals who visited Albania during August, also known as the peak of the tourist season, have been observed from Montenegro, England and Switzerland. In total, the number of foreign and Albanian citizens who came to Albania in, in August is about 2.1 million. Meanwhile, the number of Albanian citizens leaving the territory in Albania during August was 688,559, representing an increase in 1.3% when compared with August 2017. Travellers entering our country are increasingly choosing road and air options as their preferred means of transport. The Albanian Road Authority has begun to intervene in removing stone masses that blocked the segment linking the Karaba Tunnel with Albasan. The situation was created by heavy rainfall in December last year. The director of the Albanian Road Authority, Afrim Tendro, during the inspection of commencement of work, said that the intervention will last for four months. Today, we begin to rehabilitate the landslide-prone area here at Mamel. The time has elapsed until the budget became effective and how all the procedures from the preparation of the project were completed until the contract was signed. We have a contract with the company and the work has started. It is an area that brings a lot of traffic problems due to landslides. In cooperation with the traffic police, traffic management will take place for a period of four months, which is the time needed to carry out all this sliding stabilisation, said Afrin Chendro. Chandro said that although measures will be taken for the movement of motor vehicles, a half tunnel will also be built where the rock has slipped. Of particular importance is the ability to pass safely through this segment. We have taken all measures with the company to ensure that circulation will be safe. As you see, we are taking extra measures. There will be close cooperation with the road authority, the police and the police directorate of Elbasan. It is a semi-tunnel project, as we have stated before, a project that gives a solution to the sliding by stabilising and fixing a problem for a very long time, said Afrim Chendro. The intervention in this segment comes after a study being carried out by a specialist. While it is foreseen, the installation of protective nets will prevent further slippage. The governor of the Bank of Albania, Ghent Seiko, attended the meeting of the Governor's Club of Central Asia, the Black Sea region and the Balkans. During the speech held at this meeting, Seiko emphasised that the banking system in the country is stable and capable of absorbing potential risks. The Governor's Club meetings serve as a platform for discussing the recent developments of member states. At the meeting, central bank representatives uh, presented their experiences, mechanisms and policies that they use to adjust to the changes and developments of financial markets and the banking sector with the aim of maintaining financial stability. The new Arturbina has opened its doors for the nationwide theatre festival, welcoming audience to, to see 14 theatrical troops from across the Albanian regions hit the stage from the 23rd until the 30th of September. At the opening of the festival, the mayor of Tirana, Arion Veliai, said that the investment for Arturbina is one of special importance to the city. I am very happy that we, as the municipality of Tirana, joined the funding for the return of the festival. You know very well, whenever we do something different, we face the fact that the first wave of heat of the hysterical who say, hey, people have no bread to eat. How is there money to finance theatres? But I believe we have to answer with another question. Do people live only with bread? Isn't the theatre also a source of energy? Isn't music sustenance for life? I believe that a good city offers a menu that fills not only the stomach, but also the spirit and the mind. Through books, festivals and activities, this can be achieved, said Arion Veliai. He underlined that the capital will also have a new building for the National Theatre, while expressing the conviction that just like the Arturbina, the new building of the National Theatre will have the same success. 
The time has come to be less crammed, less hysterical and less enthusiastic about mortar and brick and to be inspired by the real reason why we are constructing these buildings. They are being built for people, to be tasted and experienced by humans and to inspire people. With less concern for mortar, brick, architects and engineers and all things old, with more engagement we can finance theatres like this one we will see today, said Erion Veliai. The well-known actor Ndrichim Jepa, who is also the chair of the jury of the festival, described the organisation as an indisputable value for the city and demanded that this event be turned into a tradition. The resumption of the nationwide theatre festival is of undisputable value. We need for our, our centres, creators, directors, actors, scenographers and costumographers to see this, to see each other and think, why not? Let's improve through, pos through positive competition, said Ndrichim Jepa. Thirteen shows remain from troops derived from each Albanian territory to be performed as part of this important cultural festival. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join me again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.